Does C1.5 still apply if I have a basement car park? C1.5 is that provision, two-storey class two, three or nine C buildings in volume one. It's among those provisions that are at the start of part C1, which are about allocating a type of construction to a building. And under table C1.1, a class two, three or nine C building with a rise in storeys of two will normally be of type B construction. But then you get to C1.5, which brings a concession that can bring that type of construction back to type C if you meet certain criteria. For a class two or three building like this one, this class two example here, those criteria are that each Solok unit has access to either its own direct access to road or open space, like the ground floor units here, or access to at least two exits, like these upper floor units, where you can get to the exit stair at the far end or the close exit stair that you can see here. So under that concession, C1.5, this building can be a type C building. But what if I had a basement car park? The rise in stories would still be two, but would it still be type C? Let's have a look. Here's the provision that we're talking about, C1.5. And we're talking about a class two or three buildings. So straight away, we can ignore B for now, though I will come back to that in a little while. The first thing to note is that the provision refers to a building that is class two or three. It's not mentioning a class 7A car park or any other classification. So on that basis, many would say that the answer is no, you can't have a basement car park. But someone might say, what about A103A? A reference to a building is a reference to an entire building or a part of the building as the case requires. A10 is a rule for interpretation found at the beginning of the NCC in the governing requirements and it says a reference to a building is reference to an entire building or a part of the building as the case requires. What does that mean? Well, it means when you pick up the NCC and see the word building, that might be everything, the entire building from footings through to roof, or it might only be a part of the building. Now, this might seem confusing, but I suggest to you that you do this all the time. Let me show you. Think of the scenario that we're working through right now. We have a class two building of two storeys, that's above the ground, rising storeys of two. We have a class 7A basement car park. Let's leave section C for a while and we'll go to section E, services and equipment. Now E1.4 is about providing fire hose reels to a building. And if the basement is greater than 500 square metres, then it's going to need fire hose reels, yes? However, E1.4A has this concession. It says E1.4 does not apply to a class two building. So does that mean the car park doesn't need fire hose reels? Because this whole thing here is a building from foundation to roof, it's a building. It's a class two one predominantly, so is, does this concession in E1.4a, which applies to a building, mean that we don't have to provide fire hose reels to the basement? Well, of course not, because of A103a, a reference to a building is a reference to the entire building or a part of the building as the case requires. And in this case, the concession found in E1.4a, that word building is referring to the class two part only. Therefore, the basement, if more than 500 square metres, will need to have fire hose reels. That's how A103A works. But I'm going to show you how, in this case for C1.5, that word building means that the whole thing has to be class two or three, the entire building from foundations to roof. It goes like this. The word building applied to a class two building appears twice, once in the lead in and again in subclause A. Now, if we want this example on the left with the basement car park to be a type C building, then we need that first word building in the lead in to be the entire building, car park included, because that's what can be type C. It says so in the lead in, that building having a rise in stories of two may be of type C construction. We need that word building to apply to everything. If we want the example on the left to be a type C building, then we also need that second occurrence in subclause A of the word building. That has to apply only to the class two part, not the entire building, 
because the criteria for the concession is that the building has to be class two or three, when the car park is neither. Now, that first word building and the second word building are the same thing because of the word it. The building is type C if it is class two or class three for that matter. And so the whole building on the right is a type C building. It's class two, it meets the criteria. But the whole building on the left, foundation to roof, doesn't meet all the criteria for the concession and therefore needs to be a type B building because it's not all class two or three. The 7A part doesn't meet that criteria. And when you think about it, the building on the left is more complex than the one on the right, so it's appropriate for the concession to not apply. However, of course, this can inform a performance solution to address the implications of type B construction. I said before that I'd come back to subclause B and notice that it's written in the same way. The word it links the word building from the lead in with the word building in the subclause, so it's the same thing and needs to be entirely class 9C, sprinkler protected and so, and so on. So does C1.5 still apply if I have a basement car park? The answer is no. It may provide a good precedence for dealing with the implications of type B construction for a performance solution, but it's not a deemed to satisfy concession. Mm -hmm.